And join us on this Thursday morning, Mickey Hammond. Man, you, Mickey Hammond, House Majority Leader, Republican Decatur, sponsor of the illegal immigration bill, or illegal immigrants, rather. Good morning, Mickey. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Did you get any sleep last night? Not a lot. You guys start so early, and, and I work so late. It's, it's just difficult. I figured your phone, Would be how many up. calls have you had? A lot. A lot. I figured Fox News call you too. Uh, well, not yet, but they will, I'm well, sure. They, they do. This morning, I'm sure Megan and Kelly be They've calling been you. in regular contact. <laughs> oh, uh, but, so. uh, you know, if media from all over the world, really. You know, there's somebody here from London today, and it's... Uh, Wow. It's pretty, it's pretty well, interesting. First and foremost, congratulations. Thank you. You started this win. This is my seventh year to work on immigration. Seventh seven, year. Seven years. And, we, you know, when we started, we had it broken down into small pieces because we couldn't pass anything through the Democrat-controlled legislature. They would kill everything. Now, when we took over, we put it all together mm -hmm. and added some new items to it and passed it all as an omnibus bill. Now... Since the judge did what she did, does this go in effect immediately, today? You know, I have not read. It may be today. It may be in two days. I don't know what her, her date was, but uh, it will be pretty quick. Soon. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the next right. day or two. Well, all the papers this morning, I want to talk about this first. You've got the Huntsville Times has got, and I'm just going to quote, Huntsville Times says, U.S. District Judge Sharon Blackburn yesterday declined to block most of the state's 33 Section Immigration Act. Yet I pick up the front page of the Decatur Daily, and it says, Federal judge guts much of measure just four significant portions of law stand. Now, if you're reading Huntsville Times Decatur Daily... Deceiving. This is deceiving. This is a liberal newspaper, very liberal, Decatur Daily. Why do they... Uh, that's not what it's, it's got here, Mickey. Well, I, you know, the majority of this bill was upheld by the judge, and will go into effect... And, you know, they can spin it any way they want to. Uh, there's been a lot of negative stories about this uh, coming from s several liberal newspapers around the state. Uh, and, I, you know, I hate to say this, but quite frankly, I think that, s that some newspapers around the state are just mad because they can't tell the new Republican majority what to do. And they're just upset about it. They're used to having their way. We represent the people, the people of Alabama, the people of our districts. And this is overwhelmingly supported by the people. And, uh, you know, we're used to this. It, it, it was so hard to pass this bill. We had to stand up against almost every lobbyist in Montgomery, mm -hmm. almost every group there. They were fighting this tooth and nail. And I'm telling you, without the proper leadership of Mike Hubbard and Dale Marsh, Governor Bentley, we would never have passed this thing, even with a Republican majority. It was really, really hard to do. Uh, but we've been through so many battles this year that we have thick skin. So we know the people are with us, and we, we really don't, don't mind they what really, anybody says. They really did not cut that much out of it. No, no. It, well, well you cut out the part. You, if you pick up somebody that's illegal, you they're not going to arrest you. The only important part that they cut, that, and, they, and they're not cutting this out. People need to understand this is, this is not being thrown out of court and ruled unconstitutional. They were asking for a stay of enforcement, mm -hmm. for the enforcement to be postponed until the end of the trial, which could take two years. Right. So the items, we feel very good about all the items that she allow, allowed us to go ahead and enforce. That's a pretty good sign. The rest of them, we still have our day in court. She's not ruling on the merits of whether they're constitutional or not. She's not doing that at this time. She's just saying, I'm going to postpone these, these few sections as, until we go through the court case. Now, that's a good, the only, let me tell you, the only, the only part is the transporting and harboring and concealing mm -hmm. that really matters. And we had 33, 34 sections in this, and some of them are good ideas, such as not allowing employers to take tax deductions on what right. they pay illegals, but that's not important in the large scheme. The other items that she blocked uh, did not really hurt the strength of the law. And uh, so like I say, 80, oh, we're at 85 percent. We have, what, 34 sections, and she only blocked four sections. Governor Bentley said in USA Today this morning, after rooting, he intended to enforce the strongest immigration laws in our country. The Justice Department said in a statement that it was reviewing its option while the ACLU attorneys said an appeal was likely. This bill is stronger than what Arizona has. It's oh, this the is strongest. the strongest bill in the nation. Right, that's what they're saying. We have what Arizona has, plus three times more. 
And part of Arizona's that had been blocked was has been approved by our judge because we worked diligently to get our language correct. We had professionals helping us. We were copying federal law. We were looking at the other cases that have gone through the court system. And that's why we feel very confident that as we go through this, uh, through the court case, that we're going to come out and, and smelling like a rose. Well, I think the whole thing will be up here. Here's in a the quote end. from Omar Jadwat, an attorney with the ACLU Immigration Right Project in USA Today, says it is a very dangerous situation for immigrants and people of color in Alabama. Now, how does that compare? And people of color. Well, in you know, Alabama, it's the ACLU now. Let's consider that source. Well, the ACLU has been fighting this. I know, you know, I know several of them personally. You know, they, we speak when we see each other on a first name basis. They've been fighting me for seven years. Yeah, I guess. And no matter so. what we pass, they're going to complain. And you know, if you don't have a good argument against a common sense bill like this, then you start throwing around racism. That's the easiest thing to do: is just say yeah, racism. Or right, the R word. Yeah. Yeah. All right, a couple things, Mick. Well, how do you address these churches that are saying, well, well wait a minute, we can't do what our mission now is helping these illegal immigrants. A lot of churches are going to come out. And support you know, well, I, the immigrants. I beg to differ on that. I think you're seeing some, a, few, a handful of the leadership uh, and, uh, come out, and, and quite frankly, they're exaggerating Not what the bill does. This in no way affects their right to worship. Uh, they have federal protections. Um, I think you're going to see as this case moves forward that no matter which parts of this are, are taken out, they're still going to be fighting against the bill. They, they just don't like the bill at all. And they've been fighting it from day one when I introduced it. So, um, well, basically, if this goes into like effect today, and I do think it does, can, and people are, the police officers, sheriff's deputies, whatever, they are allowed, I guess this is the main thing, to stop anyone they think is illegal. Is that no, correct? that's not correct. Okay, well tell me why. If you have to have a prior reason to stop someone, this is a secondary investigation. Okay. You pull someone over for not having a tag or for speeding, then if you have reasonable suspicion to believe that that person's in this country illegally, then you check their ID. Then and they you arrest them on sure. the spot, and you arrest them on the spot. They have no bond until they and it takes. It will t we give them 48 right. hours to prove whether they're here legally or not. Public schools must check the citizenship status of enrolling students. Now, today, do they start checking all the kids in yes. the state of Alabama? No, when they enroll. When they enroll. So they're already enrolled. Already enrolled. <coughs> now, yeah, the, if a new child goes to school next week, they will have to verify them. All right, basically, sense. we heard from several people yesterday that have a lot of uh, illegals possibly working for them. All right, what about the crops? I know y just yesterday somebody was complaining that their crops were rotting because they had nobody going to fields. And what about the landscapers that are locally here that Our have roofers. illegal immigrants working for them or concrete people or roofers and stuff like that? What do you say to those folks? Well, well I think, they don't like you today. Oh, I know that. <laughs> you have two or three different groups. You have several different labor pools that use illegal immigrant labor. Uh, the, the guys that are, that are complaining about the crops in the field, that's a little bit of a different story because I know it is hard to get people to do that. I understand that. But rather than expect us to have wide open immigration in Alabama and to have them abuse our tax dollars and steal jobs from Americans, they need to be going to Washington and they need to ask for temporary work visas for the immigrants that come in and pick the crops and go and then go back home at the end of the year. They don't need to come to us and complain. They need to go to Washington. It's very simple for them to fix that problem in Washington. Now all these other jobs you mentioned, let me say this. Before this law even went into effect in July, Limestone, Lawrence, and Morgan County's unemployment rate dropped three to four tenths of a percent in one month. Marshall County, where we have the largest right. illegal immigration population, right. dropped from 10% to 9.1%. Dang, almost full point. We are proving, and from talking to law enforcement and talking to people that travel in these neighborhoods and know, what we have proven is that illegal immigrants will self-deport. We don't have to 
put them in handcuffs on a bus and spend a lot of money gathering. They will leave on their own if we enforce immigration law. Mm -hmm. The second thing we've proven is that Alabamians will take these jobs. They're coming off of unemployment and taking these jobs that they said we wouldn't do. I want to go back to the interview we did with you several months ago when we were at the Owens Community Center. How much did you take, and I was shocked, that illegal immigration cost us in medical care, educational costs a year in the state of Alabama? We are estimating the cost of education at $200 million a year. Oh. Out of our pocket <laughs> for illegal dollars. Now you see the problems we're having now with our education budget? Mm -hmm. $200 million a year. And that's one reason that we have the clause in here that we, where we're counting how many students we have. So we can put that in writing and prove to people what it's costing. All right. I'm saying Arizona did a study in March. Their cost of illegal immigration to the government and to the economy is $2.7 billion. Whoa. Now, they're a border state. They yeah. have more illegals than we have. Right. But when you do the math, according to how many they have, how many we have, we're probably, it's probably costing us $600 million a year. All right, that's a lot of money. All right, Mick, I got to need to wrap this up wow. here. A couple other things. First of all, again, congratulations on your bill. Are you shocked at anything that the judge, federal judge, cut out or left standing in? Are you just pickle pink about the whole deal? I'm, I think, I, I'm very excited that she's looking at this with an open mind. We've seen so many uh, judges in the past put their political opinions in and just throw the thing out. Uh, I feel like we're going to prevail with the entire bill. Right now we have the strongest bill in America and I think that you're going to see lot. more illegals leaving right away. Now, one last question. How good is this for the state of Alabama? Oh, this is great. This will <laughs> save us money. <laughs> this, we are going to open up jobs. You watch our unemployment rate. It will fall. And this is a great victory for us, showing that we can write a bill that we'll hold up in court something other people have not done. So. Again, Mickey, y'all did a great job on that at the whole uh, Republican-controlled House of State of Alabama, so I know you're going to be a busy man all day today. And if you talk to Megan Kelly, tell her you did ZTV first this morning. <laughs> Cooper's got me, okay? <laughs> Thank Thanks you again, so Mickey. much. I will. Thanks Roll for having tight. me. Thanks Roll for coming tight. up. we got to take a break. we got a house full on a Thursday morning. Y'all, oh, hang on. <laughs>